How's everybody doing? God bless everybody that is watching. God bless my country of Mexico, my city of Tijuana, and God bless the United States of America. Let's thank God for another day, for giving us two legs, two arms, a heart that we can feel, a mind that we can think, and eyes that we can see. God bless every single one of you that is watching. Today in the morning, the most embarrassing and the most humiliating moment probably since this president started I'm too embarrassed to say it but probably since this president started this president today he apologized on national television to El Chapo Guzman. This tells you where our country is at. This tells you that in the hands of the narco cartel and that in the hands of the cartel of Sinaloa and that in the hands of El Chapo Guzman our security and he is the boss in our country this video that I'm about to show you is from a morning conference that Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador the AMLO president the AMLO president of Mexico He committed the mistake of saying in the morning, he said this. In the past administration, they were saying that Joaquin Guzman El Chapo was one of the most richest men alive. And he says, excuse me, I must rephrase myself. I'm sorry to call him like that, El Chapo. I shouldn't have. I will call him Mr. Loera Guzman. I apologize. I apologize. He said it twice. As he is afraid to call him El Chapo, as he is afraid to call him by his nickname as he gave in front of everybody the respect that he doesn't deserve the respect to a criminal this president has says has said in front of our national guard to respect criminals and in this video I will translate he is basically saying Joaquin Loera El Chapo I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that is not El Chapo it is Mr. Loera Guzman amazing this tells you where is our country in terms of the cartel? How this president is being paid by El Chapo Guzman? And how amazingly this is where our country is standing. This president of Mexico, recently he accused any he, uh, he deliberately said that he wants 12 years of prison for a journalist that caught his brother of Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador receiving money for his campaign as money laundry. And he said, I want that journalist 12 years in prison. So he wants that journalist for getting, 
for putting him. He wants that journalist to be locked up for 12 years because he said the truth about it. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador's brother for receiving money that is considered money laundry and fraud. But he is respecting this man that is the one that has killed hundreds of thousands of Mexicans. Amazing. This is the video of him apologizing about saying El Chapo Guzman's name. I will put it, first I will let it go as it flows, the video, and then I will stop and translate. This is Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador apologizing to El Chapo Guzman. Se llegó a decir de que el Chapo estaba entre, no me gusta decirle así, Guzmán lo era, fresco disculpa, fresco disculpa, este, estaba entre el, los hombres más ricos de, del mundo, yo dije eso. Wow. I will stop for the people that they're bilingual. Uh, you probably heard it. Clearly, you heard it. And I will stop and translate as the video is going now for the people that they are only listening in English. So this is the video, and it says something like this. Se llegó a decir de que el Chapo estaba entre... No me gusta esto. They said that El Chapo was... And El Chapo was one of the most richest men in the world. And he immediately pauses and he says, I don't like to call him like that. I don't like to call him El Chapo. I will call him Guzman Loera. I, I offer a, 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 an apology. I offer an apology. Again, I will play it again for you guys to listen how amazingly this president apologizes in front of everybody for calling El Chapo Guzman El Chapo. He says that he apologizes and he prefers to call him Guzman Loera. They have said that El Chapo, that El Chapo it was, that he was in, in the middle of, I don't like to call him like that. I will call him Guzman Loera. I offer an apology. I offer an apology. That he was one of the most richest men in the world. Wow. Woo. Wow, people. So we have a president that has more than 85,000 people that they have died in his first 20 some months of his administration. We have a comment right here. We have a comment that is from Alejandro Zavala. He's saying in Spanish, El Chapo was a it was a uh, narco trafficker, very loved by people because he gave them money for schools, clinics, medicines, education, and people that it gave them work 
out of narco, uh, out of the narco cartel. Uh, do you, I'm asking you this question to you, the Mexican, uh, you know, person that is, uh, you know, right in this comment. I want to ask you a question. Te quiero hacer una pregunta, paisano. El hecho de que haya dado el, eh, eh, ha ayudado a comunidades pobres, este, y con compromiso, con compromiso, eh, el hecho de que haya hecho el eso, este, justifica las cientos y miles de toneladas que ha traficado alrededor del mundo y el ciento y miles de muertes que han pasado bajo su cinturón. The fact that the matter is that uh, because he has helped people in the, you know, in poor communities with schools, with money and jobs, does that justify the thousands and thousands of pounds of cocaine and heroin that he has trafficked around the world and the amounts of, of killings that has been under his belt? That that, does that justify uh, his uh, behavior? I'm asking a really transparent question. Te estoy haciendo una pregunta muy transparente, nada más. Solamente una pregunta muy transparente. ¿Justifica? O sea, tenemos que darle ya el respeto a una persona así. Does it justify that? I'm just... If we are going to be justifying that, well, my God, all the gangsters and all the <laughs> all the uh, cartel kimpings, excuse me, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Gracias, Alejandro Zavala. I thought that you that you understood. And you understand. Gracias por entender. So, this, uh, I will go back to the topic. Holy cow, people. This is where our country is standing now. And I say holy cow because it is unbelievable what is happening. <laughs> How can you say that? in front of your country, in front of the nation, in front of the world. Now the whole world knows that, now the whole world knows that you are afraid of this man, that this man has control over, you know, over you. That you shaking El Chapo Guzman's mom's, El Chapo Guzman mom's hand in a mountain was not a coincidence. It was a matter of going to your boss and shaking her hand. Not only that, it was not only a coincidence that you sat down with the brother-in-laws and the family members of El Chapo Guzman eating tacos. And not only that, it was not a coincidence that you released Ovidio Guzman, the son of El Chapo Guzman, when he was captured in Culiacán. You gave the order to release him. So this is not a coincidence. It does not surprise me. What surprised me is that you deliberately don't care about your people anymore. You don't care about your people anymore. You don't care about the security of Mexicans. You don't care who hears you make these kind of horrible mistakes in front of the public. You don't care about nothing. You only care about the cartel not listening to you say that you are sorry for calling him his nickname. Se llegó a decir 
de que el Chapo me estaba entre no me gusta decirle así I don't like to call him that way I will call him Guzmán Loera fresco disculpa I offer a, a, an apology fresco disculpa I offer an apology este I don't like to call him that way there were rumors they were saying that El Chapo was one of the most uh, uh, I don't like to call him that way I will call him Guzmán Loera I offer an apology I offer an apology Wow. Woo. Wow. Amazing. Who has control of our country? We know who. We know who runs our country. Has always been like that, but for God's sake. Can you please make us think that it's not like that? Can you please just give us a dream that is not like that and you're fixing the country? Can you please just make us think for a moment that we are going to be okay and that, you know, we are going to be secure, that our children are going to grow healthy and to be, I don't know, a doctor, a lawyer, a fireman, a police officer, an honor, an, a, you know, an honorable one, a police officer, honorable one, you know, uh, probably a teacher, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Can you please give us a little bit of hope for our children can you please tell us that you know our families are going to be okay that at that nine, that at nine o'clock at night uh oscar why are you in your car because i want to uh you know can you please give us a, a hope that uh, you know i can go to the store at nine o'clock at night that i can you know uh, go to uh, go for a jog at 10 o'clock at night can i i forgot something in my car I, i had to go and pick it up at 12 o'clock at night that i'm not going to be assaulted i'm not going to be kidnapped can you please give us a little bit of hope about that Can you please tell us that everything is going to be okay for our children? For the future of our, you know, can you please, you know, not let all the, the, the elderly people in Mexico think that they're dying in their country without no purpose, that they didn't do anything to change the country. Can you please make us think just one day, just one day, that we are okay and that everything is going to be good can you please do this for just one time this is not the first president that does this but my god somebody somebody in the spanish feed said something that it that it was really truth he said Estábamos mejor antes que estábamos peor. We were better before when we were doing worse. Imagine that. We were better before when we were doing worse. And in reality, we were better before when we were doing worse. This is a disgrace to our country. This is something that is discouraging. This tells you where our security is. A president that stands in front of his na own National Guard and tells the National Guard that we need to respect criminals. A president that arrests the son of El Chapo Guzman, Ovidio Guzman, and in less than 12 hours he releases him a president that doesn't want to talk to his own people in Tijuana and doesn't want to shake nobody else's hand when he came over here because of social distance but in the next day he was shaking El Chapo Guzman's mom at a, at a mountain in Atuna 
then on the next day he was having a gathering with his brother-in-laws and everybody and now this more than 85,000 people have died under his administration and now this It's really hard to be a Mexican. It's really hard to be a Mexican because in our country, nothing is easy. In our country, and if the United States of America, something is difficult, in our country is three times more difficult. I'm sorry, but the reality, it is what it is. Yes, it is. It's more difficult over here. It's really difficult to be Mexican because we have a dream, like Martin Luther King said, but we have a dream as Mexicans that one day our country will be a first-class world country. That we deserve a better life because we are hard workers we work we work our butts off that our women our Mexican women deserve better that our Mexican kids deserve better that our Mexican children and our young and our in our younghood deserve better we know what kind of country we have. A country of warriors. A country that there's good people and there's bad people. We understand that. But we have that illusion that one day our country will be great. And that our country will be a great provider to the world respected around the world not known for cartels and for killings not known for trafficking not known for insecurity but mostly known for the beauty of their people the beauty of our nature, the beauty of our land, the hardworking women, our beautiful food, our culture. Hopefully one day, I'm, I don't think that I will be alive for that day to come. But we deserve better than this video that I showed you. We deserve way better than that. This is a complete embarrassment to our land, to our country, to our people. It is a complete embarrassment to apologize to a kingpin leader, to a cartel leader that has assassinated so many people. It is undeniably something that is to think about. If this is happening and he's the leader of the president, imagine the normal citizens like me, what kind of possibility we have to be heard, to be respected and to move on and to move forward in a country like this. We don't have no possibilities whatsoever. It is really difficult, really difficult as a Mexican. God bless everybody. Every day, I, I every day I thank God as I am doing my news every day in the morning. The first thing that I tell my audience it's uh, let's thank God for giving us another day 
for giving us a heart that we can feel, a mind that we can think, and eyes that we can see, two legs and two arms. And I'm thankful for that because I can go to work, I can talk to you guys, I can do my reporting and I can enjoy my life at my possibilities and at my capabilities. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for God to giving me health, keeping my mom and my dad healthy and my, my family and keeping all my audience healthy and, you know, free of diseases and infections and horrible sicknesses. But this really, it does not make things better. The only thing that I have said so, a man in this planet walking without faith is a man without a soul. And I always have faith. La esperanza muera el último. I always have faith. Always. And because of faith, I have accomplished a lot of things in life. I have faith that our country will be great one day. Mexico va a estar bien. Mexico is going to be great. When we realize that we are great. Mexico is going to be great when we don't victimize ourselves and we know that we were born in an Aztec descendants country. Mexicans are going to be great and Mexico is going to be great when we believe in ourselves that we are great people and that we can change the world. Mexicans in Mexico will be great when instead of corruption and being part of the corruption, we do things right. Mexico is going to be great when we respect our women and we respect our elderly and we give our children everything that we have in our souls for them to provide and be great citizens in our country. Mexico and Mexicans are going to be great when we demand to our corrupt and parasite politicians to do better and to give them and to give us everything in their pockets to help us, not to help themselves. Mexico is going to be great when you think about your, you don't think about yourself, but you think about somebody else. When you take your shoes off and you give them to somebody that does not have any shoes. When you take your, your coat and you give it to somebody that is, it is going from a cold. Mexico is going to be great when you don't think about yourself. You're thinking about somebody else because somebody else is thinking about you. Mexico is going to be great when we don't forget our history. We don't forget where we came from. When we do things right and we love each other. We respect each other. We idolize each other. We help each other. We love and carry each other. We hug each other. We appreciate each other. When we love our land, we love our flag, and we ultimately respect our national anthem, and we respect one another without no matter the color of the skin, and no matter what class you are, if you're high class, middle class, low class. Because you were born in this beautiful country of Mexico, we respect each other, we value each other because we are Mexicans, somos mexicanos. That is when Mexico will be great. When we change the mentality of every child in our school to let them know and appreciate our history and appreciate that you were born in a great country. And that this, what the president just said, that he is afraid to say a cartel member's name, that is a shame. And when we realize that that is not a loyal citizen, 
we need to take out this loyal citizen from his position and put one that wants to respect and wants to honor to be a Mexican. Not one that is afraid of a criminal. Not one that doesn't want to take the responsibility of his country in his own belt. Not one that doesn't want to protect the indigenous people. Not a president that does not want to defend the poor people and to feed the poor people instead of feeding himself with gold and plates. When a president and us, the citizens, do that, not only Mexico will be great, the whole world will be great. When we decide that instead of feeding ourselves, we can help somebody else to get fed. When we helped our children to get a better education. When, they, when we help our economy by working hard and not doing these loyal things every day. When we pray to God every day and we believe in God and we respect God. And we have our loyal beliefs in God. Because in God we trust every day. Mexico will be great. If we all love each other. And respect each other. And defend each other. Mexico will not be great. If we are afraid of a criminal like this president. If we blame the past presidents for the, our mistakes. If we don't accept our responsibilities. If we are cowards and we walk away from problems. If we don't front the problems with our face and our words. If we don't protect our people first instead of protecting our pockets. We will never be great like that. A leader does not like that. A leader does not act like that. A leader teaches you. He guides you. He tells you when you're wrong and when you're right. He helps you. He corrects you. He grabs you by the hand and tells you, no, right here. He doesn't help you. He helps your family and he helps everybody else. That is a leader. We you don't have one. We lack of a leader. We have been lacking of leaders in our country for the longest of time. For more than 80 years, we have been stepped on. We Our land has been stepped on, stolen. We have been robbed. We have been hijacked with everything. Our indigenous people have been suffering. Our indigenous people have been st stealing all of their food, their land. Our women are being raped, violated. We are being contaminated by cartels and violence and delinquents. We are suffering. And Mexico will not be great if we don't front all these problems. If we don't take care of these problems. And we don't eliminate the root. There's a rotten apple in our tree and it's contaminating all the apples. We need to eliminate all the rotten apples. And start from the root. Definitely. One Mexican was asking me the other day. Cuando Mexico va a estar bien. When is Mexico going to be okay? And I responded to him. Mexico va a estar bien. Cuando tú. 
y tu vecino estén bien. Tú y el necesitado esté bien. México will be good, like the Bible says, help your neighbor. When you and your neighbor and the necessity of another person is, is, is good. When we help one another, el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Together, the people are the power of the country. When we are for the same purpose of helping one another, we will not be defeated. Unfortunately, not all our country thinks like that. Our country is full with need and necessities. Turning into a communist country, a violent country, an insecure country, a country where we are stepped on, embarrassed, and we have a leader in our country that prefers to apologize to a criminal. Where's the security of our people? Where is the respect for all the people that they have died due to this man is there any left is there any pride left in men in Mexico God bless every single one of you I will leave now <laughs> I will go and rest it's been a long day of work I want to, you know, say hi to everybody. And I want to tell you something to you that you are a Mexican American or that you were born in the United States of America. Before I go, I want to tell you something. To you that you want communism or to you that you want socialism in your country. I don't know if you have seen that. I'm directing myself to you, the United States citizen that steps on the American flag and that wants to kneel on the national anthem. I don't know if you have seen, or I don't know if you have seen the news, but you can see it everywhere, and I'm directing myself to you. There's millions of people that want to come to your country. There's thousands of Cubans that are escaping communism, they want to come to your country. There's thousands of people from Venezuela that they're escaping socialism that want to come to your country. There's hundreds of thousands of people from Central America that want to come to your country. There's hundreds of thousands of people from South America that want to come to your country. And there's hundreds of thousands of Mexicans that they want to go to your country. They want to take your place. Because outside of your country, we live the dream of one day to live in the greatest country that exists, that is the United States of America. The land of the free and the home of the brave. If you don't like your country, we respect your flag. When we see the United States flag, we appreciate your flag. We say that's the United States of America, son. That's the greatest country that exists. That's where all dreams can come true. 
That's where everything can come through in your life. You were born, you have a golden ticket if you were born there. You only need to work hard and appreciate your country. That's the greatest gift that you can get, son. One day we will be there. To all of you, that you don't live the situation that we're living, that you think that because you're living over there and you can talk about what is happening in Mexico or Central America or South America, to all of you, that you prefer to burn the American flag, that you prefer to riot and to loot and to destroy that beautiful country, To all of you, I have a solution for you. There's thousands of people that want to exchange your place. There's millions of people that want to exchange your place. I invite you to come over here and live over here. Live under my economy live under my security live under the laws of Mexico even if you want we can go to Venezuela we can go to Cuba if you don't like it if you want to come to Mexico and try to do what you do to your American flag in our country try to burn the Mexican flag over here to see what happens to you kneel down at a professional football game with our anthem and see what happens to you. Try to do that over here. You want to exchange seats? I'll give it to you. I'll give you the keys and everything. Come over here. Free ride. You want it? You want to live in a country where a president is apologizing to a cartel member, a campaign cartel member, where more than 85,000 people have died in less than 22 months, where you are the number one in cartel activity in the world, number two for killings of women and number two for trafficking of children. You want to live here? Do you really want to change to communism? Really? Do you really want to do that? You want to live in Cuba where people are escaping in boats in the middle of the night, swimming on the river, dying on the air, trying to get out of Cuba, escaping? You want to live in Venezuela where they don't have no water, no electricity, no clothing. And they're gasping for gasoline right now because they don't have no gasoline. You're going to blame it on the sanctions of the United States of America. You forgot where you were born. You forgot. Do you forgot where you were born? The country that had the greatest music, the greatest food, the greatest economy, the greatest vacation sites, the greatest people, greatest tourism. They were great in sports, the greatest team in the Olympics. For God's sake, Michael Phelps has more medals than I don't know how many countries. Do you remember that? You want to change seats? Whenever you want to. Whenever. Appreciate what you have. Value what you have. You know, caress what you have, love what you have.
because there's millions of people they want what you are throwing away out of your window every day somebody wants to pick it up and somebody wants it and that somebody is not just one person there's millions of people that want that God bless you all it's unfortunate to see comments you know to see comments that they're so ignorant sometimes about what had just happened with the president really stupid ignorant comments but what can you expect that's what these globalists and these elite want us to grow up they want us they want us to grow up blind they want us to grow up Blind with no history, blind with no love, blind with no love for our country, with no love for our sovereign nation, with no love for our people. They want, they want us to grow up like that. No. I am a proud Mexican. A hundred percent proud. In every part that I'm always standing, I'm always saying, God bless my country of Mexico, my city of Tijuana, and God bless the United States of America. I am proud to be born here. I love my country. My country is the best country that exists in the world, whether it's suffering or whether it's not. I love my heritage. I love my culture. And I love my history, but I respect my neighbor. And I advise you to do exactly the same. If you don't love your history, if you want to destroy your history, and if you want to destroy your country, and if you don't love your country, then come over here so you can learn how to value it if you don't like it. So you can learn how to love your country if you don't love it. And do you know how you're going to value it when you don't have money for food? When you see more poor people than rich people? When you don't see that you're buying yourself every week some nice sneakers and some nice Nikes? When your paycheck comes every week and you say, it's not enough, mom, to buy ourselves some food and groceries. When you tell your kid, we're not going out this week, the next week, and the next week, because I have to pay everything in the house. When you cannot go out late at night because it's too dangerous for you to go out with your family. If you want, I can show you. I know that feeling. You don't know it. But I know it. You want to love your country? And you don't value it? I think you need a little taste of what it is. So you can really appreciate it. And you can understand that you were born with a golden ticket. And it was a gift from God to be born in the United States of America. God bless you all. Have a good night. I'm about to go eat something. Uh, have a beautiful night. Think about what amazing it is for everything that you have think about you know the place that you live I will tell you something before I go something that is going to probably say it's it's a stupid example Oscar 
but I was with, not too long ago, my first visit to El Paso, when I crossed for the first time through El Paso. And it was around 11, 12 o'clock at night. My brother Anthony and me, we were riding in the car and we stopped at a 7-Eleven close to the mountain where the star is. Up ahead, there was a park. And outside of the park, there, would some, there were some kids playing. Kids around the age of 10, 11, 12 years old, nine years old, eight years old. And as my brother went to the 7-Eleven, I was staring at these young kids And I was realizing that we don't have that. That we don't have that freedom. For our kids to be playing outside at night, free, without nobody trying to kidnap them, nobody shooting a gun, running them over and for a moment I felt really sad it's one of the most depressing days probably that I had since I had crossed I could not believe that when Anthony came back I said what are these kids doing so late at night What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong with it. Everything's okay. What do you mean? It's really late, they need to be at home? Come on, bro. There's nothing wrong with it, they're at the park. For a moment, I did not realize that I was in the United States. For a moment, I thought that I was back home. That's when you understand that you have freedom. Value that. Because one day, if you don't value it, you're not going to have that. Have a beautiful night. Stay safe. And like we always say, Peace and love, everybody, because always your country's first. God bless.